I'm going to be showing off my Tools to the Speedrun of Partners in Time. This is a Mario and Luigi game for the DS from 2004. Uh, can we get started? I want to start uh, we're just playing this back on YouTube. And um, let's see. All right. Let's just get started right here. Should I count down? <laughs> All right. Three, two, one, and go. Um, all right, this is, this is like I said, uh, Mario and Luigi Partners in Time, uh, an RPG on the DS, 2005, uh, the second in the Mario and Luigi series after Superstar Saga, and, uh, the game opens with Inside Space, where there's this alien shrew planet, and they're looking to take over some kingdom, and... Wow, they just happened to choose the Mushroom Kingdom. That's pretty unlucky for Mario and Luigi. And all of their friends and everything. Um, so this task I worked on, I finished it in 2018. It actually only took me a couple months to make. Um, but routing it took a lot longer. Uh, really, the routing for this task I started back in 2015, really. Um, but... Lots of stuff has had been found during that time, and a lot of it was redone. So I made my full, first full task, and I finished that in 2017. After that, a ton of new glitches were found. At that point, the run was pretty much glitchless. There was some stuff, but it wasn't too much at all. And then a ton of glitches were found by um, Solidified Gaming mostly, but also a few other people, um, like really tall. And and now the run is about half as long. It was three. It was about three and a half hours before, and now it's only two hours. It's really cool. Anyway, so this is the first tutorial battle against Baby Bowser. Uh, you gain control first as Baby Mario and Luigi, and that's kind of the gimmick for this game. Is you have a uh, Baby Mario, Baby Mario and Luigi, and also the their adult versions. Well, so after defeating Bowser. At the end of time. Actually, maybe this is the first time that maybe Mario and Luigi defeated Bowser. Um, he didn't capture the princess, but uh, something else is happening. After seeing the shrubs just uh, destroy the castle, we go back to the future where um, Gad from Luigi's Mansion invented a time machine and sent the princess back in time. Look, on the amazing dual screen, we can see the, uh, the map. So here's the first time we get to see some real movement. Um, there's some really small uh, movement uh, tricks in this game, such as right here, Toad Boost. Um, by jumping into the, the hitbox of that Toad, you get boosted a little bit. It's like I think that one will save like one frame only. Um, there's also ledge boosts, which I don't think there's a good example of them yet, and they're really hard to notice. But when falling off a ledge, uh, it, depending on exactly which direction you're facing and how far away, like how many subpixels away from the ledge you are, you can get a bigger boost, and those will sometimes save a frame as well. And the third, like basic thing is when you rub. When you um, run against a wall, the first frame you hit the wall, you actually get a speed boost. It's very small. It's based on how far away you are from the wall. Basically, however far away from the wall you are, you'll get boosted along the wall in that direction. So it's a kind of a strange bug that happens. 
Um, it's very minimal. This only happens for one frame. So we uh, revived Toadsworth. But now uh, the time machine's coming back. And inside was a monster, not Peach. Let's go. And this is another tutorial battle for adult Mario. Um, this time you do two damage instead of three with a successful attack. There's not much to do in these uh, tutorial battles, just hit the action command and dodge in the first possible frame. Also, avoid the tutorials, let's take quite a while. So, on these uh, level ups, we're gonna always upgrade POW because yep, this is a speedrun, we have to do as much damage as possible. <laughs> That's how it works. Um, HP and defense are not useful because we're going to be super underleveled. We're going to have to dodge everything. Um, and there aren't... Um, there, are a, there are a few... So this game, uh, one of the special things is that you can dodge any attack. Except for... There's actually a few exceptions to that of attacks you can't dodge, but we will avoid all of those anyway in this game, in this run, so it's not a problem. Um, stash uh, increases... The chance of lucky hits, which will be very important later on, but we won't actually increase stash because it doesn't have that much incremental effect. Um, speed is good to uh, go earlier in battle, but it I don't, think, I don't think it saves any turns in this run. Maybe it would save one turn if we had high, much higher speed later on, but yeah, it's not worth upgrading it because it takes way too long to get enough speed like that. Um, So now a time hole opened in the garden, and Luigi falls in. Of course, he's the first one to make a mistake. And it takes us to the past, uh, where mo most of the action takes place in the past, because um, that's where that's the time period in which the troops actually are invading. So that's uh, the companion for this game. We'll introduce himself as Stuffwell. And it's um, one of Egad's inventions as well. All right, you mind if I jump in for a bit? So we got a fifth edition from our previous runner, Tomp Runner, Tompa, who says, let's see some sortless action. section is a few more tutorials about jumping. Uh, here we can actually, uh, the cutscene trigger is only on the ground, so we can 
Minimize camera movement by triggering it uh, further to the right. And then for the next uh, tutorial trigger, the trigger's again on the ground. And we can actually jump over this one. It's actually thin enough to just jump over. But it's a bit tricky to actually hit the blocks while doing it, so I think I really like how that looks. And actually, if you go back in that trigger, it'll actually soft lock. After, after, if you go back in the trigger after hitting the blocks, it'll soft lock. Okay, so here's another um, tutorial battle. Also in this section, you're going to see the first use of something called stair jumping, which is a technique that allows you to climb stairs faster. Normally, um, actually, let me explain that afterwards. This, in this battle, um, we attack the bottom one first because the animation is actually faster for the top one attacking. Um, I believe that's the reason, at least. It's been a while. <laughs> Basically, whoever we leave alive will attack, and this one has slightly faster animation. Um, and uh, you can see how much more damage Mario is doing than Luigi. That's because he's level two, and Luigi's only level one. Um, the, the damage you deal is actually like multiplicatively based on your level as well as your power. So, level two, you do a lot more damage than level one. Anyway, so the thing I was trying to explain before, stair jumping. Normally when you walk up stairs, walk up stairs or slopes, uh, your speed is decreased a lot, um, depending on how steep the slope is. But if you jump up the stairs, then you can keep normal walking speed. And if you if you jump uh, facing, not facing up the stairs basically, so if you face uh, horizontal or back uh, back down the stairs, then you can have normal jump, normal speed up the stairs <laughs> in the air. But in the task, it's kind of hard to see because the only I only press, like in this case, up for one frame. So it just looks like I'm jumping up the stairs. So they arrive in Holly Jolly Village, this snowy town. And it's pretty much already, des already des destroyed. There's a lot of uh, wall boosts in that uh, little section right there. Here we meet um, one resident who hasn't been abducted yet. Get him out of the chimney. So this true language um, is all made up of these uh, nonsense characters, as you can see. There's one word that, in particular, that stands out among them, and that's the one you just saw them saying with two characters. Later on in the game, they give you a translation, and that one just means destroy. So in this uh, battle, the animations for attacking Luigi are faster. So I was actually able to manipulate RNG to get him to attack Luigi every time, except the last time, unfortunately, he attacked Mario. 
There's actually no way to win this battle without cheats. So, yeah, after two turns, um, you just immediately die. I don't know why I had to wait two turns for that, but I guess they were charging it up or something. Anyway, that sucks. Dude, they're dead now. But that means we switch to the babies. Who just left the castle? On the Koopa Cruiser. And this uh, baby crying is also <laughs> one of the more memorable parts of this game. It's pretty loud. Oh yeah, I guess I should mention the the length of time that that cutscene takes uh, before you um before the uh, announcement comes and before you gain control is actually random. It's actually based on RNG, which is. It's just great, I think. <laughs> it turns out, uh, I didn't I didn't know that when I was making the test, and then I looked into it uh, later on when I realized it was RNG, and I actually got one of the best possible lengths of the cutscenes. Like, I got surprisingly good for how lucky it was, so that was good. Um, some cool movement there with some ledge boosts and a zero trip at the end. Yeah, baby Luigi crying is a plot point. Yep. <laughs> and they spot a uh, Mar and Luigi. Even better than baby crying. It's baby Peach crying. So now it's the babies, we're going to go see if you can rescue the adults. Along um, curved walls or walls that like a slant that isn't 45 degrees, um, you can do something called extended wall boosts, where you actually do multiple wall boosts against one wall. Normally, it's only good to do one wall boost because once you're against a wall, there's no point in doing a wall boost, you just lose speed by running against the wall. But if you can uh, outside a wall, then you can actually uh, fun getting wall boost off it. So, um, this is the introduction to bros items. Toadsworth gives us the first bros item, which is the green shell. And it's relatively simple. Just get it back and forth. If we, um, we, so I wanted to attack the first two jumps. I wanted to be on the same shrew because that means that I do 11 green shell hits to it and then 14 to the other one. If I attack different troops, then I'd have to do 13 to both, which is more total green shell hits. Something I haven't mentioned yet is uh, the version that we're playing on. Um, there are a good amount of version differences between them, for, between the games, for this game. Um, the first one was the U.S. original release, and shortly after they made a revision, which fixed a bunch of bugs. And then if for the uh, international releases, they uh, they reduced a lot of boss health, and they changed well, they changed a lot of enemy health actually. A lot of stats were changed, 
But the most important thing is that they reduce boss health, especially in the final boss. It's just particularly notable. Um, I, I think it's something like 3,000 less HP. I should really know the exact number. Um, something around that area, where it's like about a third to half of the HP was reduced on some of the final bosses. And that means we, we choose, uh, this is actually the European version, because uh, it's the one that has lower boss health, but also English text. Uh, the Japanese version and all the other uh, international versions besides US are pretty much the same. Besides text. Then there's no important differences. Um, now there are uh, glitches that are unique to the original US release that actually do save time. Unfortunately, in this run, there aren't any, so it just means that it's just better to use this version. Um, technically, I guess there's one glitch that saves a few seconds <laughs> uh, in the US that would be useful for this run, but it's not at all worth it, uh, because the final bosses take, like, a few minutes longer. So this is the introduction to Princess Shroob. Who sends this tube missile at the Koopa Cruiser? My time as your host is coming to a close. I will be handing over the hosting duties to the lovely voice John Gabriel. Thank you. Be happy stream as well. Hmm. Uh, so this is Bowser's castle uh, where we crash landed. Getting some more wall boosts here. Now, coming up in the next room is a pretty cool jump. Um, by manipulating subpixels on these stairs, um, we're able to do a jump all the way across this uh, gap there. It's extremely precise to be able to do that. You have to jump on the last possible frame, but even that isn't good enough. You actually have to do a wall boost in the middle of the jump to gain slightly extra distance. And it has to be a really good wall boost, too. That's why you have to manipulate subpixels. Um, do some, basically, you have to do some wall rubs to get good subpixels to do a larger wall boost. Uh, to be slightly further away from the wall um, when doing that jump. And it saves like something like two seconds. I don't really know exactly, but... I, it's really amazing that's even possible because it's... Yeah. This is a bit of a long cutscene um, where, where we're finally reuniting, or uniting for the first time, the babies and adults. And you can see it. This, this game has a great humor in, <laughs> in the cutscenes. Adults try to just leave by themselves. So here's where you first learn about, you know, switching between the babies and adults. Uh, when you have control of, say, the adults, you walk with the adults, 
But, um... You can also jump with the babies, um... If, you ha if they're, like, on the same screen. Uh... So, you can jump with, um... One pair that you don't have control of. If the other one's in the air. While maintaining control of the one... You control of the pair that you do have control of. It'll probably sound a little strange, but it'll come into play later on. Um... Nice movement there. Hitting that block actually saves time because it allows you to do a ledge boost. Um, yeah, these pipe blocks, um, they take whatever pair you hit them with, you take the other one, um, you transport the other one to you. They'll be useful in a few places. And for these blue switches, there's a particular position on them that they will always walk to um, when you jump on them. And so it's fastest to just jump on that position right away, because the walking they do on that switch is really slow. And most of the time I can get in the exact position that they walk to. Sometimes it's within the same pixel, so they have to walk for one frame to get to the exact pixel. So here's another tutorial battle where you learn to jump with the babies as well. Say hello. I'm John Gable. I'm just I'm, I'm joining in to host now. And they made Paper Mario games on the DS. Where has this been all my life? Yeah, they did. So in this battle, we want to avoid killing the Goomba. If we kill the Goomba right there, then uh, Kamek will spawn another one. So now we're free to kill them because he's gone. The battle now. Left him with only two HP, so we can kill him with just one. Attack, or one jump. And then I also manipulated a lucky hit. So, lucky hits, that's the first um, one used in this run. You have a low chance of happening. Um, it's based on your stash and the enemy's level. Uh, the higher level is, the less likely it is. Um, and they do double damage, so they are really good. And later on, they will be absolutely destroying a lot of the bosses. Um, that's one of the huge differences between this run and RTA is that we're going to be able to a ton of lucky hits. In that case, I think it saved, what, two jumps? Because it did uh, eight damage instead of four. Another, without that, we'd have to jump two more times with Luigi to each one does two damage. This is the first uh, top screen. Uh, sometimes the babies will go on a top screen and do something. Yeah. Uh, you're going to be abusing top screens later. That's one of the biggest glitches in this game. But for now, it's um, a cool little thing that happens. Uh, there's a bit of optimization going on here, too. Um, when the, when, when the, uh, there's a cutscene that happens, the camera moves, and we want to... Uh, Minimize camera movement, so we stand in particular places to, to minimize that. Like this cutscene lowers the uh, this platform, so we want to get as close to it as possible. Then we can fall off during this during this bridge bonding cutscene, and also um, by stand by uh, reuniting. Uh, frozen adults uh, it stops the bull bill from hitting us. Now here's a really complicated glitch. I'm going to let it play out and then explain it. So, what? let me just first explain what, what is that supposed to be. Um, so that's supposed to be a, a room that's completely pitch black that's with difficult platforming. Uh, and you're supposed to hit that shine block to make it light so you can see. It only happens, it only works for like a few seconds. Um, but what we did is jump into the spikes while the shine spawning cutscene was happening. And this actually gives control to the babies, uh, while on the spikes. Um, and then we also then read the sign. Sorry, so reading the sign and then, uh, quitting out while the babies are still on the spikes is what gives control to the babies. Because they're on the ground, the spikes count as ground. And so as long as you can be on ground, you can gain control of them. 
Um, but we actually gain control during the spike spawning cutscene. And that means we actually have control of... It only, only gives you control of Baby Mario. And the weird thing is that jumping doesn't jumping doesn't work normally like you it's still you're still during the the um hit getting hit by spikes cutscene so they're being flown up into the air uh but jumping will make you jump normally so it makes you fall down to the ground level and then back up to the sky if that count that as normal <laughs> so what we have to do is go to, to the loading zone to actually take the loading zone you have to be facing downwards and actually during the cutscene you can't change your facing direction so i had to face downwards before the cutscene started. So, yeah, that's a pretty complicated glitch. That's probably one of the most complicated in the whole run. It saves a few seconds, so it's pretty cool. Um, so we found another time hole, and now it goes back to the present time. Yeah, so I'm watching a, uh, a pre-recorded video with where the screen switch that has these screen switches encoded in, and that is all thanks to Spike Stuff, who published this run on Task Videos. So we found this star shard after the dark room, and it's agitating uh, Junior Shubroid there. And according to you get, it's also the fuel for the um, time machine that he made. And it can also create more time holes. Yeah, Is sure, go ahead. A good time for me to jump There'll be a bunch of cutscenes coming up. Ex Excellent. We have just received word of a new incentive. If you incentive, if you want to see some brand new content during the secret block coming today, this content was literally created within the last. F and there is a new, there is a new three hundred and fifty dollar donation incentive to get. So let's see it. So let's get those donations in. I think you cut out there a little. There, you might want to explain it again. Sorry, did I? I think you cut out a little bit. Yeah. Okay, so as you know, we have a six block task block happening later today, and we have just created in the last four last forty eight hours some brand new content for it. We have a donation incentive of three hundred and fifty dollars to see that stuff, and I happen to know people who are very very keen that they should see it, and of course it is for an excellent cause. So donate, you get those donations in. Let's see some awesome task stuff. Awesome. Some more awesome task stuff, Thank I should you. say. So we're going into the next time hole to Toadwood Forest this time. And I guess this is kind of where the game really opens up and so you start having fewer tutorials. We grab some bro flowers. Those will be extremely useful. They're the next uh, bro item that's introduced in this area, and they are by far the most useful one in this task. It's really cool that they give you <laughs> the best one for tasking um, early on. Just happens that way. This toad is, is explaining what's going on in Toadwood Forest. Um, the shrooms are sucking out the toad's energy, or vim, and taking it to the vim factory, which is this building you're seeing right here. Trap them in trees. Not sure why the trees are irrelevant, but... Mamma mia! 
We're getting nine more birth flowers in this. Yeah, we totally we have a total of fifteen now, which is a lot. And this uh, room is uh, a little puzzle where we have to um, destroy. Uh, we have to burn part of the woods down. Don't do this at home. Uh, there's more camera optimization going on here. And also jumping with the adults while having control of the babies and vice versa. Just because it helps the camera be move faster. So you see I dump with Luigi there while having control of the babies. Avoiding that guy is kind of precise. Oh yeah, we actually we are avoiding encounters, but um, later on in the run, we actually will have to fight some encounters just to uh, get a few levels at the end, um, because we're going to be really under leveled with all the skips in this game now, and so it's actually very important to level up a little bit. But by far, the enemies that give most experience are in the final dungeon, so we're going to wait until then to do any grinding. So after doing that, we can finally burn those trees down. And here we use a pipe lock. Since the um, babies were stuck on the stump on the top screen, kind of far away from the exit to that area, it's much faster to use the pipe lock there. So for this area, it's intended to be completed um, counterclockwise, but we're going to go the opposite direction by using a glitch to let, allow us to walk on spikes. So if we jump on the spikes and switch the babies on the same frame, meet the spikes, then we can just walk on them. Uh, yeah, that's, that's all, pretty much. It's actually a little more complicated than that, but um, I won't go into detail, the details. <laughs> and then we can hit a pipe lock to get uh, the babies back. It's funny, we actually... Um, become solo Mario when walking the spikes because well I don't really know I don't know the whole exact reason for all of this uh, and then Luigi joins us when entering the loading zone which is really handy it's actually I think the only Mario and Luigi game where that happens if you enter a loading zone with solo uh, Mario Luigi actually comes with you I think all the other ones like you'll have solo Mario still I'm actually not sure about all of them but yeah, it would be a problem if we didn't have Luigi. So the goal is to hit these um, uh, blocks that make the bridge to, to, to the Vim Factory appear. And the great thing about doing this or area in reverse is you can completely skip all of the uh, floating platforms, which are really slow auto scrolls. You can see that platform right there. You're supposed to make it float along the spikes, and it takes a long time. And we're ready to enter the Vim Factory already. So at the start of Infactory, the adults get captured, and now we have to fight the Hammer Bros. And this is the first battle we'll, where we'll see the use of Bro Flowers. Uh, each Bro, each Hammer Bro has 90 HP. Um, 
We're gonna start by attacking the top one only. So the so Broflowers what they do is they you just throw a bunch of fireballs and they will each target a random enemy. But we can of course manipulate them to ta target any one of them. And we also manipulated Lucky Hit on the bottom one. So that's how you defeat uh, the Broflower, the uh, Hammer Bros. with only two Broflowers. Um, so in total, we can the babies can throw 75 fireballs for each Broflower. Each one of them does one damage to them. Uh, but a Lucky Hit will make each fireball do two damage. Um, so without any Lucky Hits, uh, with two Broflowers, we can do 150 HP of damage. So, but that isn't enough to defeat them because they have 180 HP total. So we have to get a lucky hit, and we want to get a lucky hit on one enemy and do the most damage to it with that lucky hit, because during that, Broflower, uh, each fireball will do two damage to that one. So to, f to, to throw the fewest fireballs possible, we wanted to uh, attack one of them more in the first flower, and then the second one attack the other one with do the do its entire damage with one lucky hit. And here we get to use hammers, uh, which you can use to break blocks and also drill underground. There's a fun little optimization you can do uh, with drilling where when you the animation for spinning it to the ground actually depends on uh, the angle you're facing before pressing Y. And the fastest is to be pressing up left. Because if, you if you're pressing up, then you have to go all the way around uh, clockwise until you get backed up again. If you press up left, then you just turn uh, 45 degrees up, and then the animation starts. And so before spinning, or before drilling, I'll always face up left. Yeah, go ahead. Nope. If not, then uh, I definitely do have something to explain. Um, there's an out of bounds clip uh, right there. Uh, by uh, that corner is a little bit glitchy. Uh, by going, um, <laughs> let's see. I still don't have time to explain it. Uh, that skips. Um, it skips uh, that. The whole room, but also skips a tutorial battle, which is really nice. And this is a, another tutorial battle right here. Uh, I'll just be teaching the adults how to use action commands, or to how to use hammers. And you can uh, give a donation during this battle. Fantastic. We have $10 from our own Blaster Mark, who says, Let's get some secret task content hype! In that battle, we got um, hit with the by the uh, those attacks because countering them with the hammer actually is a little bit slower. Usually, it's not. Usually, it's the same speed or faster to counter it. But in this case, the actual animation is a lot longer. So now we can continue on with the Bim Factory with the adults and babies together. So for these pipes. Uh, Luigi always goes to the left of Mario, so uh, it's really important to get Luigi to his position as soon as possible because he's always going to take longer to get there than Mario since he's behind Mario. So we kind of want to go as far to the left on the pipes as possible. In that case, you didn't really get a good look at it. Um, 
But here, there is another glitch called a, a ledge clip, where we can clip on top of that ledge into the box and break it. And the way that works is um, some ceilings are too low to fit a stack um, when, the when the babies stack on each other to drill, or later the adults when they're doing spin jump. Um, but if you're one unit under the ledge, and you're facing, and, the, and maybe Luigi is on the right of Mario, then you can stack, and if you walk upwards, then you will actually clip up to the top of the ledge, because it looks for the next floor to place them on, I believe. And right there, it was really precise um, jumping to that platform while without making it stop first. I think there's like three frames to, to do that jump. And now we're coming up on the boss of this area. It wasn't obvious by uh, the top screen showing the map. And this is Swiggler, and it turns out that the Vim that's being sucked out from all the toads is being used to power their saucers. And knocking over the Vim juice certainly gets Wiggler upset. This is the token Wiggler boss battle in every Mario Luigi game. Um, so Swiggler has 100 or 200 HP. Um, with flowers, remember we can uh, this, the, the adults can shoot 74 fireballs, but we're gonna get two lucky bro flowers. There's the first one. We only actually threw 50 fireballs, uh, which each did 2 damage for 100 total, so that's half of his HP, and we're just going to do that again. And this is why bro flowers are so great. You are not supposed to do this at all. In fact, his defense is supposed to be high in the orange state. You're supposed to lower his defense and, and uh, then attack him, and maybe do like 20 or 30 damage each turn. And it's, so it's really great what Pearl Flowers can do for Tass. Uh, since we can manipulate them to all hit Swiggler, which is a 1 in 3 chance every fireball. <laughs> Pretty crazy. And also manipulate the lucky hits to double the damage. And if a 1 in 3 chance of a fireball sounds pretty unlikely, which I guess it is, uh, the reason why it's possible is because RNG actually advances every frame during a Pearl Flower. So I can just pick and choose the frames to throw a fireball on, and it'll... I can almost always get a one that'll hit the right enemy within enough time. And actually, there's a lot of leniency in that case, because I only need to throw 50 fireballs each bro flower, when the total maximum I could have done was 74. And a good rule of thumb is that for each enemy on screen, it subtracts 7 from the total number of fireballs I can uh, throw to a particular enemy. So I could have actually done 60 fireballs to Swiggler, but I only needed 50, so it's really great that there is some leniency because that means there's time to manipulate the lucky hits. I do also need to manipulate lucky hits, um, and the luck that's determined right when you select the attack. Um, so, since RNG advances every frame during a bro flower, and also you can throw small fireballs to make the attack end faster and change the RNG, it's pretty easy to get, well not easy, but it's certainly possible to get any RNG you want after a bro flower. Um, but before bro flower, so for example when manipulating the first one, there wasn't really much opportunity to uh, advance RNG before then. I don't think I've mentioned this yet, but when a battle starts, the RNG is seeded by the DS clock time. Basically, it takes the uh, second since midnight of the current day, uh, takes the lower two bytes of them, makes, and uses that for the RNG seed. It does a little more math than that, but that's the basic gist. Um, so, all I can do for manipulating RNG before battle is changing which second of the day I enter it on. 
So you'll see a couple times later on waiting before a battle to get a better seed. In that case, I think I didn't wait at all. I don't actually remember. I think I got the. I think I got a lucky hit on without waiting at all, which is really good. However, I did have to manipulate RNG during the battle. There's a, there are a few things you can do to change RNG during the battle without using a bro flower. One of them is taking damage. You, at the beginning of the battle, I took damage with Luigi. Uh, this advanced RNG once and helped get lucky hit. Another thing you can do is watch the bro flower demo. And at the start of the demo, it actually advances RNG to determine um, which bro will, flow the, will throw the fireball in the demo. And you'll see that being used later on. I'll, I'll point that out when it happens. In that case, I only have to take, R I take damage once with Luigi. Anyway, so we're back in the present, and we got another Cobalt Star Shard, and now we're learning a new move, Spin Jump. So spinning is the same speed as walking, they both have a speed of 2, uh, but walking and spin jump formation is a speed of 1, so that's slower. And this room is really cool, the optimization with all the stair jumps, I think. That was one of my favorite rooms to optimize optimally. Good redundancy. And in this room we're going to uh, throw the babies onto that ledge, it decreases the length of the baby throw animation, and also uh, uh, when they land from it being thrown, uh, they land in the same place, and then maybe Luigi spends some time walking backwards to be like his normal distance away from Mario in the back. But if you if they land on the very edge of a ledge, they will just stay on the ledge like that. So that saves a few frames. And now we're in the next area of the game, Yoshi's Island. We're gonna do a ledge clip with the adults now. Now that we have a uh, spin jump, we can do ledge clips with the adults as well. And there are a bunch of cutscenes that you're supposed to watch to, to get past that house first. Uh, but we can skip all that. It saves like three minutes or something. And then there's another cutscene inside this house. We can skip the same way. Uh, this is that's one place where I know that we can save some time. Um, you can sometimes it's necessary to spin to do a ledge clip. Sometimes you can just walk. Uh, since the making of the task, I found that you can just walk and. It saves like, I think it would save 14 frames right there. However, since we need to wait for RNG for battle, for RNG seeds for battles later on, it actually doesn't save any time overall, since we'll just need to wait longer for the next uh, battle. Four. So here, um, Kamek is creating some fires that are going to block our path. Well, they're not really going to block us, because we're going to skip this entire area. Um, so this is one of the hardest glitches to explain correctly. Uh, I'm basically going to... the goal here will be to, in the next room, to activate a spring and the loading zone at the same time. And what that'll do is send um, the babies to the top screen in the wrong room. So normally, uh, you're only supposed to keep a top screen activated when you're in the same when the babies are in the same room as the adults, or the, they're, they're, each top screen is tied to a specific bottom screen. But we're in the wrong one now, and the babies spawn out of bounds in the top left corner, and you can just walk to the loading zone to the next area. It saves a few minutes, I think, but maybe only like one or two. And so we're going to do that glitch again, and I'll kind of explain like how exactly you managed to do that to get that to happen. Um, so normally you can't take a spring unless you have control of the babies. However, um, or you can, the more important thing is you can't take the loading zone unless you have control of the adults specifically. Um, so the trick is is taking the spring without having control of the babies, and that can be done by jumping. Remember, you can jump with the babies if you have control of the adults as long as they're in the air. Um, so, 
we get the then the task becomes getting the babies in a position where you can have baby Mario jump and land on the spring without actually moving left or right or anything. And so the way that's done is by clipping into the spring so that baby Mario is underneath the spring inside it. And that's the way that's done <laughs> is kind of strange. You kind of have to like walk off the edge in a funny way and then walk back into it. And you'll see that uh, in the next room coming up soon. And here's a pretty precise shot. It's pixel perfect. And we also can um, uh, join the adults during that cutscene with uh, extinguishing the fire. So up in the next room is a boss battle with Kamek. We're gonna skip that battle with top screen storage, like I said earlier. Um, but that requires entering this loading zone coming up with the solo adults. So that means you have to first open the door to it, and then we will go we will go back and do Kamek skip. So we keep the adults near the loading zone. And the first step, like I said, is to clip the babies into the spring like that. And then we can activate the spring and the loading zone at the same time. And then the babies are out of bounds, and you can see them walking right past the trigger for the boss battle into the next room. And so that's Yoshi's Island. It's pretty crazy how much we can skip in it. I think it's about... the skips basically cut the time of it in half, or maybe more than that. Absolutely, we got some really long cutscene coming up. Excellent, because we are at $615 out of our $700 goal for the Sworders Challenge for the Legend of Zelda Tool Assisted Speedrun with Lord Tom. So let's get those donations in. This is a Tool Assisted Speedrun you do not want to miss. So this monster is Yub, who we were supposed to see earlier, but uh, actually never really saw him until now. And he just decides to eat everybody. <coughs> Ooh, and if the cutscene is still going on... We have There's $50 more from Glitchy Labs, who's... Oh, I'm very sorry. Sorry, is now a good time? Fantastic. Yes, as I said, we have $50 from Glitchy Labs, who says, Our fellow robot Taskbot has decided that it is the time for giving. The product we have seen this task giving has been very generous. The generosity could not have gone to a more fitting recipient either. We would like to chip $50 into the total, as well as give out a, gra a great round of applause to all who have donated. Our combined continued support is much needed by foundations that are here to help everyone, especially when they ask for nothing in return. Just as Glitchy Labs continues to support Taskbot Labs and Task Giving, we hope that you too will continue to support great foundations like the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Stay strong, stay, stay, stay safe, stay strong, and remember, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay to not feel okay. Thank you so much. So this is the next dungeon, uh, which is inside Yub. It's kind of like a precursor to Inside Bowser, which is the whole game for Bowser's Inside Story. Uh, a lot of people like to make that connection. Um, so the first goal here will be uh, we need to help this Yoshi push the boulder, which will expand Yub's intestines, I guess, and let us continue. 
Um, and the way we're going to do that is rescue five more Yoshis for to help the, him push the boulder. Right here, we have to get this fruit, and we can actually overlap the cutscene with getting the fruit and ping and the baby's coming out of the stump. And the funny thing is, um, if you collect the fruit with the adults, that means you actually have to give them, give it to the Yoshi with the adults. Like, you can't just give it with the babies only. So we're going to have the babies do the um, right half of this section and the old to the left half. Get three ice flowers. Ice flowers are pretty much the same as bro flowers. Um, there are... Uh, the differences are, Ice Flowers can apply a debuff to the target, which is, I think, completely useless in this task. Um, also, Bro Flowers, and they also, uh, there's also elemental weaknesses in this game. Some enemies are weak to Ice and some are weak to Bro Flowers. That also will not come into play in this run, because there aren't any important ones that we fight. And so... I switched to the adults on a particular frame during the baby's walk in order to manipulate this battle. Um, to get a lucky hit in this battle. Like I said before, uh, the RNG seed for the start of the battle depends on the DS clock time, so it only matters what second you're on. It's not based on the frame or anything, or RNG beforehand. So there I, uh... I waited a little bit in the bro item menu to watch the uh, to watch the demo for the bro flower and bro and the ice flower. Oh, and it got a lucky hit there. I mean, that was to me a lucky hit. And I just realized that I lied because those Arcy Shubers are actually weak to ice flowers. <laughs> so that's the one case where it actually does matter in this run. Um, a lucky and critical hit. So normally, uh, elemental weaknesses will double the damage dealt. So that's called a critical hit. A lucky and critical hit will actually do three times damage. Here we're gonna do another ledge clip to skip a little puzzle here. And this saves like something like 30 seconds. Um, you're supposed to do a pretty long combination code with the babies. And that skips not only doing that code, but also even bringing the babies to the side at all. So it saves a good amount of time and just uh, routing this area. But actually it means the adults are stuck there because they have no way out. But there's actually one way to get them out, which is, uh, well, actually two ways. You can use the pipe lock, but a faster way is to uh, rescue all the Yoshis because they immediately leave. Um, for this one, we had to do a little mini game to shoot down the saucer with uh, water. And then we can fight the RC Trooper. So, um... Normally, uh, adults do more damage than babies, but for for flowers, it really doesn't matter because they're all going to do one damage per fireball still, or ice ball in this case. So the adults maybe do the same amount of damage for in this case. Um, in that case, I did not get a lucky hit, only a critical hit. So I, I did 38 fireballs that each did two damage. And the reason I didn't get a lucky hit is because it would have taken too long to manipulate it, unfortunately. And that's the last Yoshi, which means the adults are just transported out of where they were stuck. And coming up in the next room, we're going to do an Out of Bounds clip. And actually, when pushing this boulder, it actually changes which room is down. There's two separate rooms for uh, the one with the... Uh, enlarged intestines and the ones with the, with the uh, smaller, I don't know how to describe it. Uh, yeah, the one that was original. And the rooms actually have different collision. So this clip is actually only possible in the new room. And also the loading zones to the next room only exists in this in the new room as well. So you can't, even if there was a way out of bounds in the first, in the original area, um, there is no loading zone. There's no loading zone that exists in that first room, so you have to push the block to make the loading zone exist. It would be really nice if you could skip that part. It seems so, like we're pretty close, but it's actually impossible as far as we know. And by the way, that clip is actually only possible um, while stacking. 
because stacking has a slow movement speed. If you were to use to just walk, um, it would detect that you're too far inside the wall and push you out. But if by stacking, you are not as far into the wall and you don't get pushed out as soon. So you can actually go through it. Um, right there, I threw the babies as soon as possible so they hit the ceiling and hit the ground faster. In this room, we have to uh, hit the eggs uh, with water to break them. There's some more camera manipulation here to save the most time. There's not much option we have to do though with the camera though. And again, uh, five Yoshis is... They cannot move the boulder in at all, but six Yoshis easily just move it over as far as they need. And I guess that's kind of accurate actually, you know? Static friction and all that. Um, there's more extended wall boosts right there. Uh, So here we meet uh, Toadbird again, and he's lost his memory. Yeah, but the only thing he has is this drawing, which doesn't really seem to show much right now. Uh, later on in the game, you're supposed to brush off the dirt and reveal a secret in that drawing. But we're actually going to skip that part, so... And that's the only use of the touchscreen in the whole run, so... This is actually a no touchscreen run of Partners in Time. Um, so here's the next boss battle coming up. We're going to unequip um, all the gear and badges. That's because we want to sell them later on. We're going to sell all of the gear, starting gear, and also the badge we got earlier. Um, it's not important to do it before the battle, but I did it because it favorably changed the RNG. Or really, it just took more time, so I got a different seed a few seconds later. And I still need to wait a few frames before the battle to get the right seed. So I'm gonna like wait on these text boxes like a tiny bit. So this is Sunny Side, which is a great pun, I think. Sunny Side spelled uh, Sunny and then C I D E. So there's a lot of RNG in this battle again. We want them to throw as many eggs as possible, which is four eggs, so that there are fewer enemies on screen, which means we can throw more fireballs to hit only Sunnyside. Uh, when there's two enemies on screen, you can... It's, you don't have to waste much time at all to get to hit Sunnyside. And also that waiting for the battle was to manipulate that lucky hit. Now, Sunnyside has 480 HP, so uh, we're gonna defeat him with four Lucky Bro Flowers. Now, when there's one egg on screen left, it's extremely rare, but possible for him to just choose to throw that egg. And that's what we got right there. And now, Sunnyside's the only target, which means we can do a lot more damage. We saw before we were doing like 110 or so, and now we're doing more like 130. So the average out to around 120, which uh, 4 times 120 gives you the exact amount of damage needed to kill Sunnyside. There we go. Getting that fight is really nice. At first I was... Back when I was, you know, years ago when I was first writing this, I was thinking maybe it would be possible. We got perfect RNG to actually kill him with only 4 flowers. And then I tried harder and harder and I finally managed to do it. The, the hardest part is getting that uh, 
egg throw to be lucky to, to that, that one egg throw and also manipulating the lucky hit for the next uh, attack because there's not really any op opportunity to manipulate RNG between those two events. So you need to get an RNG value that will give the rare egg throw and lucky hit, which is something like one in a thousand. Maybe, maybe not that rare, one in 500 or something, something like that. The lucky hits a few percent and the egg throws about one, one in 10. So if you remember before, uh, Baby Bowser stole the two Cobalt Star Shards we collected. And then, uh, later on, he ate them. Um, but now, he's eating so many Yoshi cookies that he spat out the shards. And... <laughs> You can see the Cobalt Star Shards have a little bit of sentience, where they actually uh, knock Baby Bowser out of the way. So coming up is where we're about to pretty drastically break the game. Um, when returning from Yoshi's Island, and then talking to Iga the next time is when the time hole to the final dungeon opens, which is Shrub Castle. Normally, um, there's, when you go, if you go in that time hole, there is a gate that blocks you. That uh, needs we need to get all five Cobalt Star Shards to open that gate. But we're not going to do that. But before, before that, um, there's a Toad Boost in that library, and now we're going to the shop. We're going to sell a bunch of things using a glitch called Money Glitch, which when you sell all of a certain item and then select the next item on the first possible frame, you actually get to keep the sell price of your previously sold item. And so we sell the salvage badge, all the starting gear, and eight smash eggs I picked up in Yoshi's Island for a total of 49 coins each, which is the sell price of the salvage badge, and got over a thousand coins. And then I bought two big POW badges, which is a badge that uh, gives you a POW boost after getting a great rating for a bro item. And I also got an, one EXP badge and equipped that on Luigi. So right there you saw in that cutscene the time hole to Shoop Castle opened. And we are pretty much ready to go there, except we need one uh, important thing, which is the new next ability, Bros Ball.
So, uh, Bro's Ball allows you to move a lot faster than normal, so we're going to be using it a few times just to move faster. But it requires you to be solo adults, so in a lot of cases we can't really use it because we need to keep the babies too. Another cool optimization that we can do is that when you form the Bro's Ball, uh, the ball actually is formed 8 units um, behind Mario, which is normally between Mario and Luigi. But if you face um, the other direction that you're walking, it'll still form behind Mario. So if you face backwards, then behind Mario will become the front of him, or the way you're going, basically. So that's what I'm going to do whenever I use Bros Balls, face the other direction. But it's interesting that this displacement actually can allow you to clip through some walls. It's very situational, but it so happens to be useful to do the next major skip. So we're going all the way to the third floor with, to go to Shoop Castle right now. So this time hole is available as soon as you complete Yoshi's Island, normally. But uh, there's this cutscene where Starlo says, it looks like we can't enter this gate because we need five couple of star shards. But we're about to do a clip right through the gate, just like that. So that uses that ball displacement thing I just talked about, where uh, by entering ball near the wall, you can just go right through it. And then we um, stay out of bounds and collect the babies while out of bounds. And now in this dark room, which is like the one in Bowser's castle, except I have to do it, uh, you can skip a lot of it by jumping over the platforms. It's very precise to do all of those jumps. And I also got two red shells, which will be useful later on. And I really should emphasize how big of a skip that is. Normally, I mean, there's like about an hour of the game, or more than, yeah, about an hour and a half of the game that that skips. It's a bunch of areas, um, you know, a bunch of bosses, three more Cobalt Star Shards. Uh, Ton of story, obviously. It's a chips basically half the game. So now we're progressing through Shoop Castle. Uh, normally, there's another ability we also need uh, the baby spin and also baby cakes. We're also gonna have to finish this area without those abilities that we're skipping. Um, over here, we're gonna grab the space pants, which increase the wearer's power by 30, which is a lot. And we're gonna get some copy flowers. Copy flowers are really good. And now we're gonna start grinding. Um, so this fight is a really good one to use because soul bubbles, uh, which are the flying enemies there, give a ton of XP for how much damage they, for how much health they have. However, if you attack them and survive, and they survive the attack, then they will um, heal, or also they can also revive each other too. So we need to kill them on the same turn that they die. They have 100 HP, so we have to do a lucky hit on them. Now, I could not get a lucky hit on the first attack in this case, so what I did was I attacked the Shoe Rex first, and did 54 damage. Um, now I got a lucky hit on that Soul Bubble and killed it. Now, also, I, ha I have the EXP badge on Luigi. What that does is it gives 1.2 times experience for any enemy that Luigi specifically kills with a Bro Flower. Or sorry, with any bro item, as long as it's with the bro item, and Luigi's the one who does the who, who, uh, whose turn it is. Um, so I have to make sure to kill every enemy with Luigi, because I actually need all of the bonus XP for this route. And um, so there we go, I killed the first soul bubble on Luigi's first turn, and killed the other two enemies on Luigi's second turn. And you also saw at the very end, I waited like about a second before that last ice flower throw. And that was to manipulate the rare drops of Supreme Slacks from the Shubrex. Supreme Slacks are a kind of are a slightly better version of Space Pants. They give the same power boost, but they give a lot more HP and defense, which is kind of useless for us, but that's okay. Um, so now, we'll, so we'll have um, the Space Trousers and oops, sorry, I mean Space Pants. What are the Space Trousers? Uh, <laughs> and the uh, Supreme Slacks. 
for adult uh, Mario and Luigi. Wait, I think I got that wrong. Yeah, sorry, the Shrewbrex actually drops 100 point pants. Um, which is for the babies. Uh, the gear in this game, there's like gear that works for the adults and gear that works for the babies separately. The 100 point pants um, give 100 HP and they also give 20 POW for uh, the babies. So now we're going to do another out of bounds uh, with another ball clip right there and then collect the babies from out of bounds and bring them over to the next screen. And before that was found, it was actually necessary to get a baby spin to complete the final dungeon. So that requires another like hour and a half of game, or sorry, another half hour of gameplay or so. So that's saved about 30 minutes when that was found. So I mean you didn't could go right away without having to go get a baby spin first. And now, the funny thing is, uh, it actually allows us, that also allows the adults to get onto the ledges, which they're not normally supposed to get onto. It's only supposed to be for the babies. Which means we can fight this encounter with the adults, which is a little bit faster. And we defeat with two Broflowers again, and defeat them both with Luigi. We had the uh, ghoul guy possess the Shubrex. Um, because that saves time, you don't have to kill it. It means that the ghoul guy gives, still gives experience, but not the bonus experience, unfortunately. But, uh, we still got the bonus experience from Shubrex, and we also got another 100 points pants job. So now we have one for baby Mario and one for baby Luigi. Also, I think I should mention that, um, that Shubrex is one of the, uh, few enemies in the game that has an attack that actually can be undodgeable. If, depending on what size they are, if they're at full size, they can charge you and it's actually impossible to jump over. That's why I had to uh, jump on them to start the battle, so that, that whenever you jump on them, they get squished a little bit and then you can actually jump on them when they charge at you. Very fortunately that RNG worked out for that to happen. And so, uh, by going on the ledges this way, we can actually get to Normally you're supposed to like shoot lasers and make a block appear and then open up the door to get to this room and go in the pipe. But we went kind of opposite around to another way and got to this pipe. Um, but this is kind of still like the beginning part of the dungeon. There's a tall bookshelf that blocks the way between here and the end. But first we're going to uh, get into one last encounter for experience. And this is against a Shubsworth. Um, the Shroomsworth drops Supreme Slacks, which I mentioned before, which we need to, um, to, uh, we have the Space Pants for one of, one of the adults, but we want Supreme Slacks for the other one. Um, so the Shroomsworth has 160 HP, and once you kill it, uh, it, uh, the intern Shroom will give it, replace it, replace it, which has 120 HP. If you let the intern Shroob get one turn, then it will revive the, revive the Shroob worth. So you won't avoid that at all costs. So we have to kill the um, Shroob's worth with Mario. And then have Luigi kill the intern Shroob. Very unfortunately, uh, it's not possible for to kill the uh, Shroob's worth only one row flower. That's because it has 160 HP. The most we could do is 148. And it's... Still barely not possible with the if we did like a first strike and also countered, it's not quite enough damage. Also we need a lucky hit and yeah, it'd be hard to do. But we can do a ledge clip and a ball clip out of bounds right there to skip over the bookshelf. Really cool how that looks. Um, so a ledge clips can be used in places where it may not seem that there's even a floor above you, such as like those little alcoves near a loading zone like that. And outside, on top of those uh, those loading zones, where there's actually a floor you can stand on, the walls on there are like not coded correctly or something. I don't know the, why exactly they're different from other walls, but it's you can bulk it through those pretty p consistently. Like outside of those walls, uh, there are very few places you can even bulk it at all. But we can say it. Using that, we can stay out of bounds and go past the bookshelf. And that basically takes us to the end of the final dungeon. So we that skips around 
15 minutes or so of the final dungeon. There's a whole basement section and a bunch of other stuff to do. Full mini games. But we're doing the final climb up to the final boss area. Also, I want to bring up that, um, we've used Ball three times since the tutorial. Um, uh, once for Gate Skip, once for a uh, Baby Spin Skip, which was, um, right after the first encounter, and once for the Library Skip. Oh, and also once to get to the encounter. So, out of four times, three of them were used for, uh, Glitch, which I think is kind of cool. with how useful they are, like, just to go fast. Three out of four of them are actually used for a glitch. So here's where Princess Peach is being kept. We mentioned that we're, we have all the Cobalt Star Shards, which, uh, yeah, we definitely collected all of those. I think we did, right? We were collecting all of them. Yeah, but Peach is not happy that they collected, they collected the Cobalt Star. Or, yeah, that we collected two of the Cobalt Star shards. Or, well, five of them. I don't remember. But now the top of the castle is under attack. Not sure why they're attacking their own castle, but there you go. The shoe mothership you see on the screen there is actually um, a dungeon that we skipped. So we're going over to this uh, room where there's we're going up to the top where there's a detachable room that can shoot, uh, lasers. This is the last little mini-game before the, uh, final boss. And I also take this time to equip, um, all the gear and badges that we got before. It changed the RNG for the minigame, because RNG advances, um... Well, this the little animation, there goes. So, for this one, you have to hit four saucers to hit the shoot mothership. You can actually hit two at once, if you wait for the perfect time. It's very precise to do that, actually. Because the collision is kind of strange. But that's pretty fast. It's really hard to do it that fast. Um... Actually, that's actually one second slower than I did it in my original task. Because RNG isn't really seeded before that battle, it's based on whatever RNG had before. So, in theory I could have manipulated RNG in the Shroobsworth battle beforehand. For that minigame. But it really doesn't matter because I have to wait for RNG before the final boss anyway. And so here's Princess Shroob, where if you played all of the game, um, you saw her quite a few times that we didn't, we didn't really see her that many times at all. But this will be like, finally we get to fight Princess Shroob, but there you go. 
That's where you see destroy translated. She just says destroy, 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 destroy. So we took our, uh, damage there to manipulate RNG. And now we're going to do a copy flower. In order to get her out of the shield, we will we need to do 15 hits. And copy flower, each hit counts, that's good. However, we're actually going to do more than 15 hits to get a great rating. I think it's like 20 hits or something. And the great rating is to get uh, the power boost right there, you see. Uh, it's a 60% power boost, 1.6 times damage, 1.6 times power. And then I do a bro flower with Mario to get his power boost as well. Also, it manipulates RNG during that bro flower. It's to get a really fast attack here. So you can do some really long attacks. And also to manipulate RNG for this red shell. And now we get to these uh, infinite attacks. Red shell and copy flowers are both infinite attacks. We're going to use copy flowers in the next one. Um, red shells do more damage and are faster. But uh, you cannot hit uh, air enemies with the red shell. But yeah, for this attack, we just it's like a green shell, but it's infinite. You just there's, If you hit the action commands, you can go on forever. And you can also, if you hit Y, um, in this case, the baby button, before uh, it hits the enemy, then you do a little more damage. But uh, Princess Shroob here has 1,700 HP, so this red shell takes quite a while. Even with the leveling we did, like, we still uh, are very underleveled. Um, we could have done more leveling and saved some time on this red shell and also the next ones. But it's not worth the extra time to, to get to level up again. So you can see that there are some lucky hits that I'm getting here. It's really hard to manipulate lucky hits during a red shell because RNG does not advance during a red shell. There's no way to change the RNG. The best you can do is, since Luigi actually has a higher stash right now, he has the um, ability to get more lucky hits. So I was able to to save some time by making it so Luigi got more lucky hits rather than Mario. And that's Princess Shub. Um, yeah, that was 700, 700 HP, and um, on the original US releases, uh, she had, I believe, ah, oh, man, 3000 HP, yeah. I used to know these numbers uh, by heart. It's been a while, but yeah, 3000 HP. And it's time for the secret twist. wonder how many people in this chat. Actually, probably a lot of people do not, don't don't know about the twist. I just want to say that. We'll see. Anyway, Princess Peach says, "Whatever you do, don't complete the uh, Cobalt Star Shard." But Baby Bowser does it anyway, just because he wants to be the one who does it, or something like that. And Princess Shub says, "Now it's your turn, sister." Peach says there is another uh, another shrew princess inside her inside the Cobalt Star Shard. Uh, when she first arrived in the past, she sealed one of the princesses in the Cobalt Star Shard, which was the energy source of the time machine, and then split it in pieces. And so the one that we knew the whole game was actually just the younger and less powerful Princess Shroob. And I think, I find it kind of funny that um, we still have to fight uh, the Elder Princess Shroob. 
Um, even though we did only collected two Cobalt Star Shards because she's supposed to be contained in all five of them. Only if all five of them come together. So here's the real final bottle. Um, there's a... We um, have to hit a saucer there to change RNG to get her to get her to do a much faster attack there. And now we're going to do the same thing as before. Do some uh, bow flowers to get the pow up. So this first phase of the attack of the battle has 1800 HP. And more defense than last time. And it's faster to do, get hit by that attack because countering it is pretty slow. You have to um, hammer her like four or five times or something. And of course I manipulated a lucky hit there because it's really easy to do it after a pro flower. Unfortunately I have to... Um, oh sorry, that was the one we only have to hit it twice. Um, I would die if I got hit by that a second time, obviously. Um, so I need actually three red shells for the whole run. I only got two back in the dark room a little while ago. I got a third right there. That actually gives you two red shells, so I actually have four, but yeah. This is the attack that has a pretty long counterattack, and I absolutely need to dodge it or else I would die, because it does a lot of damage. And now it's time for the red shell. So just like the first princess, um, we're gonna use a red shell. The red shell, actually, the length of it depends on uh, how far away the enemy is from the bros, and this one's a little bit faster. At top speed, this is only 18 frames per hit, and the other one was 27. But we're doing less damage, because she has higher defense. This is um, 60 FPS, but at some point during, uh, it might be down, it might be getting down to 30 FPS though. There's some 60 FPS animations that don't show well if it's at 30 FPS. I'm not sure what's showing on stream right now. We have a minute while you're having this very exciting boss fight. Yeah, go ahead. Mm, actually, no, sorry. You will have um, <laughs> okay. You will have a chance coming up soon, but I, I should explain the beginning of the second phase of the battle. Um, this is the uh, final form, and when she transforms, there's. Uh, she does a turn right away, regardless of turn order. And each of her body parts attack, the head, the feet, and the, and the arms, her tentacles. And there I got hit to manipulate RNG and get a really fast foot spin attack here. So in order to deal damage to her head, you have to attack the crown. In order to reach the crown, you have to first damage the foot. So we're gonna do red shell on the foot. Yeah, I will occasionally have nightmares about this boss too. Well, not for a long time, but I used to have some. Okay, you can uh, use some time now. Fantastic, we have an anonymous $5 donation as well as a $10 donation from our very own Racer Hey guys, it's been amazing you bringing you the first ever task giving. Let's keep the hype going and see if we can hit the, t the donation incentive for that sweet secret task content coming up. I know we can do it. So as you can see, uh, those counters are all doing one damage. 
That's because the crown is still active and it makes all damage do be one. Except for some reason, uh, that counterattack can go through that defense. I'm not really sure why. Uh, to kill the crown, we have to use a copy flower. Um, it's also possible to use a bro flower or I guess, you know, also trampolines or. There's a few options for it. But um, in this case, copy flower is the only option we have to target one enemy and actually defeat it in one turn. You can use a bro flower to. With Tass to attack only the crown and defeat it, but I don't have. I can't quite do enough damage because the crown is 200 HP. And now, finally, we can attack the head. And this is 2000 HP, and you can see how much damage we're doing. This is a long copy flower right here. And. I guess I should reiterate, it's very difficult to get copy flowers this long. Um, in RTA runs, uh, people expect to get around 60 hits, because at that point it gets really fast, gets top speed, which is 19 frames. You have 19 frames to react and hit the right button. And the window the window for actually hitting the um, attack is, is 5 frames, so it's, very, it's pretty nice. It's not too bad at all. But you have to react to see which bro is coming next. But obviously with Tass, it's you can just take this one infinitely as well, like the red shells. And it's the only um, the only attack that we have that can attack one enemy in the air. Uh, pocket Chomps is another one. Also trampolines, but those hit multiple targets. And they also don't do as much damage or are as fast, so Pumper Flowers are really good for the end. They're kind of necessary for the final hit. Um, also something I'm doing is I need to make sure that um, I want to end the final hit with a failed hit, which does one damage. Because otherwise I'll have to do an extra hit at the end. So that means I have to get her HP to be zero, or sorry, one at some point, which doesn't always happen. So I manipulated RNG for that to happen. And the way I manipulated RNG before this was by watching the Broflower demo one last time. Uh, it's a nice thing I had one pro flower left after all of this. And yeah, this lasts a couple more minutes, I think. It's pretty ridiculous that this is fast, I think. But... Yeah, I believe the record is 170-something. But it's not consistent at all to get above, like, 80 or 90. Yeah, after, after this battle, there's still, um, there's some more cutscenes. The battle itself will end, uh, in a few minutes. I guess only, like, one minute or two. I think two minutes from now. If there's a little bit of time. Yeah, personally, yeah, there's plenty of time still. Oh, sure. Okay, we are just $60, 60 away now from that swordless run of Legend of Zelda. So... Yeah, we're very close now. Keep those donations coming in. There it is. And speaking of which, we have $50 from Crow of Murder 15, who says, Hey guys, Crow here. Let's keep pushing for that secret task content. Task giving hype! So um, that's pretty much the end of the run for the most part. There's some epilogue and there is also a <laughs> sort of one more battle, which is like a secret final boss battle, which is 
not at all important because the stats don't matter for it. But here, uh, Baby Luigi's tears turn the shrew mushroom into, uh, Bowser, Baby Bowser. And so they realize that somehow <laughs> the chemical com uh, construction of Baby's tears actually has the ability to uh, heal shrew, the shrew mushrooms. So uh, Egad pumps um, uh, this chemical like that's similar to Baby's Tears uh, all over the Mushroom Kingdom. I guess it's probably just salt water, but uh... And all these areas and characters we didn't meet. Shout out to Kylie Koopa. We do have one more donation to read if now's a good time. Go ahead. We have met the incentive for the swordless run of The Legend of Zelda. Again. Thanks to a $75 donation from Ganon, who says, Link, I have come for your sword. I have no idea if that's how Ganon talks. I'm going to assume so. That was great. faster to roll in this small section right here. So Bowser eats the shoe mushroom, says Schnarfle. And of course the uh, real final boss has to be some form of Bowser like in every Mario Luigi game. But this one's not a real boss battle. Bowser battle music, which otherwise we wouldn't hear because uh, we skipped the Bowser battle in Thump Volcano. Or Thump Caverns, actually. Um, so for this battle, you have to dodge enough attacks and get them to hit the spirit of Elder Princess Shrew on the top screen. 
Um, for the most part, it really doesn't matter for the time what attacks you get, but there's one attack that's really long. It's this one, where the fireballs come from the sky. It's like about uh, ha a half the DPS of the other attacks. So we want to avoid it as much as possible. So, and there is some opportunity for RNG manipulation. Like a normal battle, it's seated when it starts. And you can also take damage to manipulate it. But none of that was actually ended up being faster for this in this case. For the last three hits, we can just get hit too. It saves a little bit of time on waiting for the animations for them to hit uh, the top screen as well. And with that, uh, the last remains of the troops have been defeated. Or something like that. Who knows, maybe there's some shrubs being uh, kept frozen somewhere in the Mushroom Kingdom. Probably not, but maybe. So all that all that's left is the last little cutscene right here. Um, just some more text smashing to do. the Yoshi cookies in this run. <laughs> so there's a cutscene earlier in Yoshi's Island where Luigi picks up some Yoshi cookies, but we skipped it. So um, now I'm not sure where he's getting the cookies. Some people in the community like to joke that uh, he's these are like flesh cookies or something. He's peeling off his own flesh to make cookies. I don't know. That's not a really good note to end the run on, but hey. Okay. 